West West Show. Because we were working when there were dress codes. Oh, the, the few places I did work here had dress code, eh? Because now it's like, I remember when you had to wear a collar. Yeah, you had to yeah, go to some place else and they wear a collar, leather shoes. Yeah. And you couldn't wear sneakers or anything, eh? Sport shoes. Yeah, I think the, the dress code is the two things. I noticed that when there was a dress code, like people look sm- like the the place looks smarter, you know what I mean? Like you can have a, like a hip hop club name, but if you're just like you're going to church, it's like that shit. Yeah, if people there's people like holding when I be like hold like, wine glasses and shit. You didn't see these people holding handles, but when you go into a hip hop club and people are wearing like tall tees and like baggy shorts, hats and stuff, it's like yeah, that guy's gonna come and buy like one o one o six. You know, bourbons or whatever, and hold bottles in his hands, and like you know, he's there to drink. Like those are the sort of clubs that have different vibes, eh? Like yeah, but yeah, when I did work in town, it's like nah, it's a rare, it's a rare sort of dress code. Like you know, seeing guys all dressed up like going to a wedding, it's always like you look overdressed for town. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's funny there because you say it's on the strip, like it could be on K Road or up High Street, but it's like nah, that guy's overdressed. So like, man, lose the jacket, lose the jacket, you know? Yeah. yeah. But then I did go to places where, like, you know, they would, they'd say it's a hip hop club, but you couldn't wear a throwback or like a basketball singlet. And it's like, oh, what's the fuck? How you can say it? this is hip hop, man? You mm. know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, these guys. I'll just wear your t shirt. It's like, damn. He's made me look underdressed now. I got a little bit of a take on that, eh? Like, when things change. I don't think it was the clubs itself that changed the, the um, dress code. Because yeah. I remember when I was going out back in the early 2000s, late 1990s. And you had to wear a collar everywhere. You had to wear a collar, you had to wear black, you had to wear leather shoes. Yeah. And then as soon as the Balangis started wearing the skateboarding gears and the, the yeah, jeans. Yeah, true that, eh? And, you know, then, you know, no one's going to bounce them. Yeah. Impossibly. So I, I, that's what I think. I might be wrong, but I think that's how the, the um the you know, the dress code thing came down in the clubs because all the Balangis were suddenly wearing... Those casual gears, eh? Yeah, Because yeah. I remember, it was like an overnight thing for me, I, I remember. Like, ne- next minute, you can wear sneakers, as long as they're nice and clean, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you got, like, you know, you're wearing, you don't wear a collar anymore, you can wear a t-shirt or a nice yeah. top sort of thing. Mind you, man, I think people got to have a lot of, a lot of, like, understanding and love for doorman, because it's usually never the doorman that set that rule. That's on the club owner, eh? Or it's on the, the security manager, whoever owns the security firm, you know? But the amount of shit that people put up with, eh, like Dorman put up with, like, I've seen Dorman bounce their own neighborhood mates when a dress code came in overnight, you know? And they come in and they go, you fucking change this card, cafe, you know? To the point they'll ring radio, swap, so you can come and tell so-and-so's mates that they can't come in because they're underdressed. Because the bounce will get in trouble, eh? Oh, bro, straight up. Because then it's like, how come you got 100 people wearing collars and then there's two guys wearing pro club tees? Baggy shorts, you know? And how does that work? Yeah, man, this is one of those things. They like, bro, there's people who's living here, you know? You, you're going to give them shit at work. You know, they obviously got to follow the protocol. Like, if the boss has said, nah, it's too underdressed, man, you know? Because I remember, I remember people, like, if they get bounced because of what they wear, they'll look around in the club, like, see if yeah, anyone yeah, else yeah, is wearing yeah, the yeah, same yeah. thing. What about that guy? That guy's wearing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, bro, hard up. How come he's in? The one, one thing that fucking killed me at work was the hats like I worked at Basio that was like that was predominantly fucking hip hop you know they had like two or three guys and the only two guys that they allowed to wear the hat was like the, the MC or like say one of the, the hot DJ rappers whatever or whoever was DJing but the DJ would never leave his booth but man it just when you let one guy put on his hat it's like it starts a domino effect eh? cause you know it was sort of like the end of fitted hats and snapbacks came in. So yes, people used to wear, buy the snapbacks because you could just bring it to the side of your jeans and still have your hat. And then when you leave the club, put your hat on, you know. But man, it just took one guy, eh? like one guy. And I remember during the the um the night, the bus started knocking guys off. So it would be harder to control. So I sort of had like a thing with one of the MCs. I said, my, my bro, the next guy who's not part of the DJ or music entertainment whatever 
if he's putting on his hat, I want a flashy. I don't give a fuck if you're not looking at me. I want a fucking phantom your face with the molly until you look at me and you're going to tell the DJ to cut the fucking music. Like, oh, no, nah, this is a bit much. Like, nah, fuck straight up, bro. Because you're not me. I'm trying to do a job here. We're trying to keep the club, you know, pumping. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you, man. You're going to fucking kill the music. And then when I tried it one time, mate, and then this guy fucking tried to do this. Oh, I got gang affiliation shit. And then this is like, oh, come on, bro. Like, this, we just implemented a rule. And it was like all hats, even like cheese cutters, like no dress hats. Like, simply the rule is MCs and DJs, that's it. This guy didn't take it away. Then one of the bustles was trying to tell me, oh, doesn't so so his brother, you know. Have a, you know, just be understanding, like, you know, it's his brother. Yeah, well, fuck it, it's his brother. He doesn't work for us. His brother does, you know. It's two different people. And then, yeah, one night this guy tried to feel my little valet. Go all the way up the stairs, <laughs> put his head on, man, and he, I don't know how he made it as far to the bar from where I was, <laughs> but he was halfway through the bar, always, always, almost to the front of the line. Fucking, I just ding, 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 the lighty. And, like, because your spotlight usually has the, like, a wide strobe, and the strobe is sort of like emergency. Like, in most clubs, like, if you got a, like an emergency strobe on you, that means, fuck, something's going down. But I just flicked the MC, the fuck, and then it was the first time he had ever done a day. And either the, yo, DJ, cut that shit. Fuck it. The DJ stopped that. He goes, all right, man, I'm going to make him loud and clear this one time. My man with the yellow hat. Fuck, take your fucking hat off. Oh, shit. And that was all you needed, eh? Like, every week after that, man, the club was clean, eh? But I felt sorry for the guy, there. Because, <laughs> man, the man our girls are like, you know, fucking just going off it. I'm like, fuck, take your fucking hat off, you fucking clown. Shall ladies, you guys have a safe night. Fuck yeah, man. But, yeah, but he had to make an example of someone, eh? What club was that? Was it Basu? <laughs>